What's good, ladies and gentlemen, bitches? Welcome back to the channel. We're here recording live from the Mob Shit with another episode of the Southampton Career Mode. This is part 30, and we are practically, we're, we're down there at the midsection of season 2. Uh, getting on, we have a, a FA Cup replay. As you saw in the last episode, we ended up drawing 2 2 with Bury, a poor result uh, that came off the back of just to horrible finishing. Uh, the whole episode, really, we, we, we the, the finishing was just, it just wasn't good. <laughs> it just wasn't good in any way. So, I mean, I didn't change too much in terms of, like, panicking and going, oh, we need we need a full-strength squad. We need to play the first team. I mean, there are still some uh, players like El Unice is in there. But players like Valverde, uh, who played in the last game, start again. Nathan Redmond, as you can see right here, first-team player, pulling it back to El Unice, who tries the first-time shot. And his effort just goes wide of the post. Five minutes is all it took for us to really break down Bury. And as expected, I mean, we're playing away from home this time. But, I mean, at home, we really should have done a lot better. But in this game, we really kind of... We, we did more of what we should have done the first time. Was we're creating chances right here. Still yet to score. As a brilliant block right there denies Charlie Austin from scoring a goal. And we come in at them again. Nice football. It's just beautiful football being played all around in this game. Valverde slid it through to El Unice. And Mohamed El Unice opens the scoring for us to 60 minutes. And 60 minutes in and all, all sorts going down. We had a few chances to open the scoring. Should have taken maybe uh, one or two. But you can't really. I mean the first El Unice chance wasn't really a clear cut chance. The Charlie Austin chance was blocked by a really good block. So you can't really put none of that down. The first real clear cut chance we got in the game was this one. And El Unice found the back of the net with it. So, I mean, for whatever reason, uh, again, away from home here at Bury, we, we're doing a little bit better than we did at home. I mean, at the, in the game at home, we created a lot of chances as well. Not to say that we played poorly. It's just the finishing. The finishing wasn't there. Missed some chances we really shouldn't have missed. Uh, threw away some opportunities. The final ball wasn't always there. In this one, we were playing a little bit better. Up to this point, at least. James Ward-Prowse just missing the target with a free kick right there. Still waiting for his first goal of the series, James Ward-Prowse. Still yet to score at all. Playing it into Nathan Redmond, who's got a lot of space to run into this time. He's got an option to his right, who he looks to is Mohamed El Yunusi. Getting the ball on this right-hand side. Pulls it back, and it finds the back of the net right there. Easy enough finish. Fun fact. Fun fact. I wasn't even looking for Jesse Rodriguez with that pullback. I was actually looking to give it back to Nathan Redmond, but Jesse Rodriguez got there in front. And tucked it away into the back of the net. I was going to try and let it run through Hesse's legs. But I don't even know how to do that consistently. Like, to let it run through their legs onto another player. I know how to obviously let it run through his legs and run onto it. But how to let it run through to another player, I'm not really sure. So I, I, I say, you know why I ain't even going to try it? We're going to double our lead and try and avoid letting anything crazy happen. But look, Burry were just doing that. The way they gave the ball away, crazy. They were doing that consistently way too much in this game in the early stages. Still in the first half. And we're piling some more pressure on him as Redmond puts the ball into the box. Falls to Jesse Rodriguez, who tries the, the, the fancy-looking effort. Doesn't connect on it at all as he would like. If he did get any sort of sweet connection, you got to think that we'll find it back in the net pretty much right in front of goal. Wasn't able, wasn't meant to be. Valverde went into the second half, now finds Charlie Austin. James Ward-Prowse gets the ball out of his feet and fires into that top corner. And James Ward-Prowse finally gets his first goal in season, January of season two. Sorry, season two. January of season two. And James Ward-Prowse finally gets his first goal of the series. And that's not by a, want, a, a lack of trying. He's had, he's had his chances. He's been playing games. But uh, just not happened for him up until this point. And it's a brilliant goal to open that scoring as well. Uh, top bins, top, top bins. And right there, that pretty much kills off the game as a contest uh, for any chance of Burry to get really get back into. I mean, uh, especially in Season 1, we've had times where we've thrown away two goal leads, three goal leads even, to be pulled back to 3-3, three, 2-2. Three, two, two. Uh, but we kind of killed that off. I made it a, a thing. I, I made it a, a goal to really stop that happening. And we, it, it succeeded. But Burry, again, giving the ball away so needlessly. Jesse Rodriguez is finishing. Come... It, his finish, sorry, comes off of the post. We've hit the post so many damn times in this series, it's crazy. Ball played into El Unice. Now he's got a player running inside. It's James Ward Prowse who's going to slide it to his left. Charlie Austin trying to find a back of the net, but denied by the keeper. You see, we're making a few say, subs, sorry, right there. Buffal 
comes off of the bench. And here he gets straight into the action, skipping around his man, getting past another, getting onto his right foot. And with his very first touches of the game, Sofian Bufal fires us four goals ahead over Bury 70 minutes in. This is exactly what should have happened in the first leg. This is exactly no, no other way I could put it. Should have, should have, what should have happened in the first leg? Confident. Uh, dominant victory right here as Buffal doing brilliant twist, just dancing around his defenders right here. Sofian Buffal say it every time he scores, like he's had a brilliant season for us off the bench sometimes, starting a few games. And really, uh, I, I couldn't ask for much more than him. Again, Buffal on the ball slides it out left to Kapushka, who also came off the bench. Kapushka returns the favor, and Sofian Buffal hits the double right here. Two goals off of the bench for Buffal, connect, uh, connect him with the other sub. Both of the subs connecting, and Kapushka gets himself an assist, putting it on a plate for Buffal. And another first time finish for Buffal, getting himself another goal. Buffal's looking good. He's looking good, man. And if it wasn't for uh, Redmond playing playing so well uh, in the early stages of this season, I think we would have put Buffal into the starting lineup a lot easier. 91 minutes into the game, we get our sixth. As Charlie Austin now scores what I think is his first goal of the season for us. Again, not for the, not, not for the lack of trying. He's had a few chances where he should have found the back of the net. But his finishing shooting boots not but not been on this season up to this point. Uh, but again, like I said, getting his first goal of the season. Hopefully he can uh, hit the ground running and score a few more for us as the Englishman right there. Nice. That's, that's, that's what we want to see more from Charlie Austin. More, more finishes like that. Confident. Finding the back of the net, but more out of off the field action, uh, out of uh, onto the transfer window. Uh, Sam McQueen did leave us. He just returned from his loan at Nantes in the French league. Came back and I decided to let him go. I mean, we got options at left back position. Don't really need him. Uh, another thing that's happening outside in more more uh off field stuff. We did sign Wesley Hoot to a new contract, so that is something nice happening right there. He agreed a new four-year deal with us. A little bit of a glitch going on with uh. You know, I had to get it, get it, get. We gotta give them their time to get in. I mean, the comment commentators are uh. It's a job that is going out of out of fashion real fast with with this series. Uh, so we gotta give them their time to shine when it's their time to talk. But I was saying a little glitch with the manager attire or whatever the problem. Is. I don't know why that happened. I hope it's not a uh, consistent thing because I don't want to see that over and over again. But getting into our next game, no Bertrand Chilwell starts at left back, so Lamina is the captain for the day. And you see Sofian Buffal get himself a start. Nathan Redmond's form did has dipped recently. Uh, towards the, I mean, heading up to January did dip. Sofian Buffal, like I said, has been on fire. So, I mean, it is a bit of a big moment for this series because up to this point, Redmond and Vasquez positions have been nailed down. They've been on form throughout the whole series. But like I said, Redmond's form has dot dipped since the beginning of the season where he was absolutely on fire. Uh, and Buffal, as you can see right here, opening the scoring is on fire. Sofian Buffal. On loan for the begin for for the beginning of the series throughout season one, has come back determined to take his Southampton career to the next level. Nathaniel Klein puts it on a plate for him, and Buffal is finishing this just emphatic. Like he could have just tapped it into the near post. He said no. Nah. He said no. Nah. Every finish top bins B. He said every day top bins B. Buries it into that top corner, and then Sofian Buffal continues to play like this. I we have to. He has to. I always say it, and I always have to make sure that I continue to, uh, Im, Im, how, what's the word? To implement the factor of, as, as you can see right here, I've got to interrupt myself. Bertrand Traore gets him, so they, they mentioned him earlier, before the beginning of the match. Top scorer in the league, and he can do dangerous things like this. Bertrand Traore getting us two goals up. But like I was saying, I, I have to implement the what I say of whoever's playing... Whoever's playing well, sorry, plays. And that's how I always like to do my career modes. If you if your form drops off for a, for a, sustain, uh, for a uh, substantial amount of time at least, you can't just play bad one game and get dropped. That's stupid. But if it drops off consistently and there's someone playing well consistently like Buffal has been, it's got to happen. So, I mean, if he keeps it up, he'll stay in. If he doesn't and Redmond keeps playing well, I mean, starts playing well again, 
he'll get back in. Right now, it's just a temporary change. Sofian Buffal getting his chance. And right now, it looks like he's taking it. But we were pegged back to 2 1 and Stoke. Poor defending, really. Like, Hermoso was dragged so far out wide. I'm not too sure why that's the case. But you look in the middle, like, where are the centre backs? Her, we know where they are. Hermoso's out wide. Hoot was at the near post, which meant, I mean, there was no one really tracking the man on the inside. 71 minutes before the next chance actually comes to us as Lamina plays a beautiful ball into Bertrand Traore and he's denied by Jack Butland and really should be doing better as you're going to see from this. I mean, great composure to actually take a touch and settle himself. But the finish is straight at the keeper and luckily we wasn't made to pay for not finding the back of the net with this one because that was the end of the match. We did shut up shop a little bit but still struggling to uh, not concede goals in this one. Like, it's it's looking a little bit tough for us out here in these streets right now. Continuing to train uh, Jan Valerie. Still trying to decide what to do with him. If we should uh, quote unquote waste time training him. Because he doesn't have the the, the high potential uh, sign, I guess, uh, anymore. And again, I don't want to overreact because he's only 20 years old. But maybe I would have hoped for him to be a little bit higher with me having put training in. But again, they didn't rate him too highly at the beginning, so he's not doing horrible. So maybe we keep our faith in him. Uh, I did want to show real quick. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was that quick. Didn't even get, give you guys really a, ta uh, a chance to sh see it. That uh, I did end up simming a game, which is the first game I've simmed in the series. I think like, it was uh, the, the next round of the FA Cup. We played against Barnsley, and I... At the time, I really just didn't want to play another FA Cup game, like two FA Cup games in a in an episode. So I decided to sim it. Uh, didn't use the the actual like sim thing where you can see it being simmed, because when you when you sim it through the calendar, they tend to uh, mix up the team lineup a little bit more. So I decided to go that way. We ended up winning two one, so went to the next round of the FA Cup. Uh, but a few signing, a few few transfers going through here and there, and there's going to be one to show. Is Tottenham play Man City? It's a big game for this career mode. Second and third place, our biggest competitors playing against each other. But we did make another signing as Sergi Dada signs from RCD Espanol. Obviously, we signed Hermoso from them earlier on in the series, and now Dada joins. Thirty point four million for Sergi Dada as he joins from Espanol, and he is gonna play. I mean, again, we've played. This is our highest uh, paid transfer fee in this series up to this point. Uh, he's also one of the highest rated players in the team. We we activated the release clause for him because they were kind of stunting. Like they didn't. They were stunt. They were asking for more than his release clause by quite some distance. I'm like, y'all stupid because I can activate his release clause now and you get less. Be realistic. Uh, so we did get him though. So in this game, he is going to start and make his debut alongside Hoybier. But again, like I said, that doesn't guarantee him a starting berth in future games. If he doesn't play too well, uh, he's not going to be guaranteed to start. And I will say, I will, slight spoiler, not major spoiler, but he didn't play great in this game. I mean, he wasn't poor. He wasn't, I mean, he, he what I mean by it is he just didn't stand out. You know, he kind of went under the radar, which is not horrible. I mean, it just means he didn't play great and he didn't play poorly. He didn't do anything bad. He didn't do anything particularly good. Uh, but we do get our first chance of the game, and it falls to this man again, who got himself another start. Sofian Bufal is on fire right now. I mean, and it's not consistent with, like, Bufal scored seven in his last six. No, because he hasn't, consi he hasn't necessarily played consistent football but when he has played off whether it's off the bench or friendlies or cup games he's been playing brilliantly and again look in fact he said if it ain't top bins i don't want it if it ain't top bins it don't matter if it ain't top bins it ain't sofian buffal uh and he opens the scoring for us 49 minutes in as you can see haven't really seen much of dada hoibia we're playing beautiful football plays it into triare gets it back from triare and pierre emile hoibia is the guy is he's the guy this season. We've got players stepping up. We've got players. Birch and Traore has been brilliant. Lucas Vasquez has been brilliant. Uh uh but Hoybier has been on another level. He's been on another level. Assists, goals, tackles, build up play. I mean he created most of this build this goal and he was there to finish it. He was the one who played it into Birch and Traore. Didn't look and, and go, oh that's a great pass. Ran into the box, was there to, to uh, turn it away. 
And he might be the first uh, midfielder in this series to score 10 goals in a season. He's certainly heading towards that with 7 goals in January. That's nothing to turn your nose up at. But Leicester trying to get themselves back into it. 67 minutes on the clock. The first uh, real test. I mean, it's not even a real test of Alphonse Areola. But he punches it wide. We get ourselves another chance right there. I think it's Gabby Adini forcing the save out of the keeper. Leicester coming forward now. Numbers advantage as they just power forward. And a former player of ours in the West Brom career mode, Marcelo Brozovic, absolutely fired that pass. Alphonse Areola. And again, we concede. But we did again leave with all three points in that one. Huge transfer done right here. Meza Ozil going to Everton. 33 million. And I can't even stunt. Like, I can't sit here and lie. He looks good in that kit. He looks good in that Everton kit. Like, I ain't even mad. But, um... Another outgoing for us as Sam Gallagher, another player who just returned from his loan with Galatasaray. And I just had to cut my losses. Like, he wasn't really going to do anything huge. 4 million, well, 4.6 million. He leaves us. Uh, was never really going to be a, a part of the squad, even going forward in the future. 24 years old now. This is what the table is looking like, though. We do open up a little bit of a gap at the top again as Manchester City obviously just played Spurs. I don't really know what the result was, but we are now... Five points clear at the top of the table. We're looking good. And this is a new feature I'm going to show you guys right before we end this episode. Career Mode Legends. We're going to keep track of all the major stats uh, throughout the series. Like these that are on here right now. If you guys have any other stats that you think I should put uh, here. This is all time throughout the whole series. So it's going to include players who might have left the squad. It's going to include players... From season one all the way to the end. Highest fee paid is what we got on here right now. Sergi, Sergi Dada. Uh, we did just break the, the highest fee paid throughout the series. 30.4 million. Most season awards. Lucas Vasquez with three. Obviously, he won our player of the season last year. He won the goal of the season last year. And signing of the season last year. So, again, like, it's, it's all time. It's not just one season. Most assists in the series. Lucas Vasquez with 25. He was our top assist last season with 16. Uh, most goals, Lucas Vasquez with 21. And most appearances, Lucas Vasquez with 75. When I thought to do this, and when even before I started just making the graphic, I had no idea Lucas Vasquez was dominating so much. Like, he's got all of them. Most appearances, most goals, most assists, and most season awards. But we're going to update this every episode. Uh, and obviously, again, like I said, season 3, season 4, season 5, we're going to update it. So who knows who's going to be on the top of this list when we end the series uh, but yeah, that's it. Again, if you guys think there's any other stat we should follow that I should put on here, I'll do that. But for now, that's the end of Southampton career mode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Join me tomorrow. I'm about to record another episode. So join me tomorrow. Peace.